guys, welcome back to the RobeDye.com vlog. I'm Matthew Wilson. Today this is going to be part two of how to wash your jeans, but we've already washed our jeans. So we're just going to be having a look at the denim, we're going to be talking about any changes that took place, if any, and we're going to have a look at some of the fades that's really popped out over the washing process. Right, I thought I'd bring them inside. Uh, a little bit less noisy, a little bit easier to think, and also a little bit easier to see with the sun coming up. Okay, the first thing, first impression is, as soon as you touch them, you're gonna notice that they're much, much crispier than they were before. Um, it's it's not quite the same as that like rigid feeling that you get with a brand new pair of jeans. It just feels like a little bit rougher, I suppose, and that's just, Totally normal. Uh, I think that happens with most clothes when they go through the through the wash. So the texture of the denim's changed slightly. It's lost that greasy feeling that it's picked up from just all the wear, all the dirt, and I can't really say the denim balm that I put on um, really made them feel that much more greasy. Uh, but it it will have added to it slightly, but it's completely lost that. They feel they feel dry and they feel they feel clean. What's next? Okay, we we'll just start at the back. So, the leather patch. Leonard knows this. Leonard's the, the founder of Benzac. I really didn't like this leather patch. I, I much preferred the, the old ones that uh, he used, which is like this really, really thick veg tanned leather. This, I believe, is... is it goat skin? Hold on, I'm going to show you the old patch so you can see the difference. Okay, so... This is the old patch. It's um, natural veg tanned leather. It's very, very thick, um, it's embossed on the leather, um, and I preferred this because I liked the aging of this much, much more than what I was getting on the, the patch that's on the special number ones. I believe for the next round, uh, for the next production round, he's actually put this patch back, because I guess other people were feeling the same way. I mean, this is, this is aged really, really nicely. I've taken care of it, like after every wash, I've always like, oiled it up and I think I was even oiling it quite regularly anyway. I wasn't a fan of this until now basically and like post wash I really really like it. It's stretched and shrunk and like distorted in a really interesting way because before I think that before the thing I really didn't like about it is I felt it looked a little bit plasticky. It lacked the character of, of, of this one. But now it's just gained so much character. Like, where it's been, I don't know if that's been embossed or if it's been burned in or stamped in or whatever. Um, but that sort of slightly come out. Uh, the texture of the leather's really come out as it's shrunk down. Um, the, the texture within the embossing is also changed and it's really like come to life. So I actually, now I'm really, really digging this. I think it looks fantastic. So. Yeah, okay, interesting. What else, what else, what else? Right, this is one thing. You know how I was saying in the last video, guys, that I actually recommend you doing the whole washing pre process just in the machine? Uh, there's still a stain. Like, I sat in something nasty uh, just before these jeans went in the wash. And that's still there. And my guess is if I put them through the machine, where it could get properly agitated and things, that would come off. Um... I don't know if it's really going to bother me enough to to actually put them through the wash again. Probably not, because they're going to get washed quite soon anyway. I mean, the most important things, they don't smell anymore. Well, they smell fresh, they smell nice, they smell like laundered jeans, they don't smell like musky, sweaty, ball sack. Right, back pockets, Yeah, the, you'll find that this has happened. I mean, obviously, I think you saw some of the bath water that was running off. They did lose a surprising amount of indigo, or a surprising amount of blue that did wash out of them. And that's just meant that the, the fades that were in place already have really started to pop. Uh, one of the biggest indications is some slight damage here in the back pocket. It's not really a hole, it's just like a few pulled threads. And you see some really like... It gets down to the core of the, of the warp thread and you see the white weft as well. So that looks really beautiful. Um, it's just accentuated all the sort of fading that was getting around where the pockets have been folded back. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, okay, it's hard to see inside here, but like inside there, you see the dark indigo where it's obviously not had any wear. I, I never was one to get very many, very much like uh, wallet fades in my back pocket. I've got, I guess actually you can see in comparison, I've got some wallet fades, some wallet fades, not that much, but like a little bit. Down towards the crotch area, which was the main reason that I was getting these jeans, um, or it was the impetus to get these jeans washed. That is, I mean, you can see here, it's just a very, very different looking, it almost looks like a different fabric. It looks like a, like a properly stonewashed denim because it's seen so much wear. It's very, very light, very, very fluffy, um, feels totally different to the rest of the denim. That just means that it's just in desperate need of some repair. Otherwise, I'm going to get a blowout quite soon. And yeah, again, you can really, really see the wear in the crotch area. So that's the back of the jeans at the top. Yeah, okay, let's stick to the back just now. Similarly, with that uh, tiny little hole on the back pocket, that rip that is actually gone, it's like, it's, yeah, it's a hole. It's definitely a hole. That's gone all the way through and again, it's just kind of because it's lost some, well, the indigo was lost before, um, but it's just lost the dirt that was kind of like masking in the, the fades. That looks really, really beautiful. Like um, all the all the warp threads, the, the indigo dyed ones, they've kind of gone this really, really nice, interesting hue. And if you look down at the base of them, you can kind of see where the indigo just like sticks to the outside. And that's, well, that's how the fades happen. This is the honeycombs on the right leg and they are always with me much, much more distinct than the ones on the left leg and they're looking pretty beautiful and they're much more distinct going from the inside of the leg to the outside. I think I mentioned this before in a video, the reason for this being is that when I'm riding on my bike, I've got like a tube protector on the top which is made of cordura and when I'm riding on my bike and I'm sort of dodging in and out through traffic so I'm off the saddle, I lean the bike to the right hand side and then that rubs on sort of the inside of the knee. That's why I've got the hole and that's why my honeycombs are much more distinct on the right side and particularly the inner right side. Over to the left. Yeah, I mean they're looking looking pretty good up at the top sort of the, I guess that's kind of the inner thigh rather than the knee, lower inner thigh, higher knee. Um, Honeycombs are looking nice, definitely, but they're not that they're not that stark, they're not that strong. But yeah, it's still it bodes well for the future. And I think like in the next six months I'm really gonna see stuff starting to really set in. Down to the bottom of the jeans, I mean this still looks like it still looks like new denim to me. I I, I never get fades down to the bottom of the jeans. I mean for one thing, I mean I, I do I roll them up all the time. Um, I'm using this pin roll uh, more and more recently, almost exclusively. So even though I've got like a little bit of a line running along here, um, it's not worn through as much as on my previous ones where I just like set the cuff and just left it. Um, you can definitely see it and it's definitely going to be a wear point in the future. But yeah, I've not got any fades at all, not even very much hardly any roping at all. Roping is what happens at the bottom of the hem when they're hemmed to the Union Special. It's just kind of like to do with how the tension in the denim um, and has its threads with the machine. It kind of creates this sort of offset tension. It looks like a woven rope once it's been faded down. But yeah, uh, with the pin roll that's going to be mostly protected so you just don't see see anything. So there's not, there's not that much interesting at the bottom of the jeans. Hmm, bit of a pity. Anyway, then we're going to come to the front of the jeans and that's where kind of the spectacular stuff is really, really happening. That's where you're going to find most of your fades happening. Starting at the top again, let's have a look. I mean, the inside of the waistband up at the top. Um, I suppose, yeah, this would be the back and this is really, really nice. So yeah, one last thing at the back is the back belt loop. It's where I always get my heaviest fading. And you can see that, I mean, the belt loop's almost through to pure white cotton here. Um, I think it's, well, my belt obviously like goes there. It pushes out a little bit. 
and then my rucksack will sit on top of this and just like rub all the indigo away. Um, yeah, so now to the front. Similar things have happened with the belt loops at the sides and not so much at the front. I guess they don't get so much wear. Uh, the waistband itself, yeah, these were always a little bit big for me in the waist because I've got these big thighs that kind of, they were maybe like an inch big for me in the waist. And they've sort of bunched up a little bit and you get some nice fading going on around about the buttons. Uh, you can also see it, going to the back again, uh, next to the back patch. Um, where it's obviously just like folded over a little bit and that's where we're getting some fading there. Uh, yeah, I mean looking at the buttons themselves, they are, I believe they're aluminium and they're painted or, yeah, I guess painted. Paint's chipped off a little bit, but I believe that happened before. Um, on the rivets as well, the paint's worn off on the high part. Um, down towards the sort of pocket openings, that's where I'm seeing some really, really heavy fading. I mean, it makes sense in taking stuff in and out of my pockets every single day, numerous times a day. So yeah, I'm gonna obviously get some fading around here. Uh, the coin pocket on these Benzacs, I believe, I said, I can't remember just now. It's definitely not the Levi's coin pocket. Um, I think this is the Wrangler version, Wrangler style coin pocket. So it sort of goes, it's a little bit bigger than the Levi's one and it goes sort of deeper into the pocket itself. Um, getting some really nice fading around there where it sort of, that's where it ends in the pocket bag. And then, yeah, this the salvage line, the hidden six pocket, it's, it's really, it was looking grubby as hell and now it's back to being almost white. So I'm kind of happy about that. You don't really see it like day to day because the belt's covering it, but like a grubby selvage line, that's the only part of the jean you can really tell is really, you can tell how dirty the rest of the jean is. Uh, down towards the thighs and my whiskers. Um, oh, before the whiskers, yeah. I believe I've talked about this as well in a previous video. I think I was talking about this uh, with like where your jeans are going to need repaired. Uh, the phone fade. So that you can see pretty distinctly. It's the exact shape and size of my phone. And yeah, love it or hate it, it's just an inevitability of carrying a phone in your front pocket. Uh, there's a little bit of wear and tear at the front as well that I guess I'll get repaired. Um, Oddly enough, I mean, the pocket bags that Leonard uses are really, really strong. Um, they're made of like a pretty thick sort of chambray material, uh, which, which is fading itself, actually, which is really nice. I was expecting to have more fades coming through from the pocket bags. That's happened on um, most of my jeans in the past. There's a little bit coming in, but nothing as much as I thought it was going to. Or is it? No, it's not, it's not really as strong as I thought. You can't really see anything over on sort of the right hand side. Um, my, the whiskers that have set in. So the whiskers are basically creases that happen like going from your crotch sort of out the way. And there's not really very much, I mean they're definitely there. There's maybe yeah, just two or three of them. It's not this sort of really, really strong like whiskers that come out all over the place. Probably because these are actually pretty tight on me, uh, especially up towards the thigh area. So when jeans are a bit tighter, you'll find this um, at the back of the knees as well. Uh, you're going to find that your whiskers and your honeycombs are much more sort of, they're much more horizontal and much more sort of parallel. Uh, the jeans that are a bit looser, they've got sort of more room to, to move on your body. You're going to find that they're a little bit more, can I say interesting shapes, but a little bit more wonky, shall we say. What else have we got? Yeah, over the knees, I mean, I'm not doing any manual labor, so these really don't get very much wear and tear, but we're seeing much, much more of the character of the denim coming out. Like you're seeing all of these like pretty distinct, like vertical weft lines. Um, no, warp, vertical warp lines, warping, yeah. Uh, coming down through the denim and they've kind of, they've popped in places and they're fading individually and they look really, really interesting, gives the texture, gives the denim much, much more texture overall. 
Uh, down towards the knees, I'm never really kneeling down very much. I've got a little bit of, I don't know if you call it whispering or honeycombing, a little bit of sort of fading around about the knee area, but just on the top and uh, nothing, nothing like below the knee. Uh, so on the inner seam here, getting some little bit of fades here and there. Um, and then similarly, what I said at the back, like really nothing going on from the knee down. It just looks like pretty new one wash denim, which I guess I'm a little bit sad about that. I was hoping to get some, maybe some stacks here and there, but then I'm rolling them up most of the time. So they're, so they're the right length for me. But yeah, I mean, I guess it looks interesting overall. Um, with so much happening at the top and nothing happening at the bottom. It's just my personal fade pattern, simple as that. What else is going on with the jeans post wash? Or what else do I really notice? And I think, I think that's it. I mean, I'm looking forward to getting them on. I mean, obviously, ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so one thing happened in the knee. Do you guys remember this? I certainly remember that. That's when I had a bad bike crash last year. And so I came off the bike at a hell of a speed. My skin was ripped through, this was almost down to the bone. Um, my jacket was ripped through, my shirt was ripped through. Um, I was in a hell of a state, like bruised ribs, it was, it was awful. Uh, these jeans, like they hit at this part of the jean and they skidded along, they, I skidded really, really far along the pavement, like meters and meters. and. I mean, this shows how tough denim is. That like tiny little mark there, which you can't really see. That's all I got from my horrible bike crash. Um, so that's that's a nice little memory right there. I told you, like, what you happens in life informs your fades on your jeans. So yeah, that's that's brought back something. <sighs> okay, guys, that's. Pretty much my impressions like post-wash. I'm happy. I'm really really happy. I love looking at the denims post-wash Um, because I think it just like it makes all the fades really really pop and really sort of spring out at you And I think it's a good way to set up your fades like going forward as well All of these honeycombs you can still feel the texture in it without any problem They're gonna set in as soon as you put them back on your body I'm um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try them on and then we gonna tell you how much that they've, they've shrunk in, if they've shrunk in anything. And if they have, then it's gonna stretch out within the first couple of days anyway, so don't worry about that. And the next step with these is I'm gonna get them repaired so I can actually wear them for the next six months and we can really see how these fades just like take off. Right, anything else? No, I think that's it. I mean, I'm just looking. I've been talking for 20 minutes again, Jesus. Right guys, um, thank you very much for tuning in again. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too much. If you've got any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. Um, head over to ropedye.com for any and all information you could possibly want on denim, menswear, anything and everything. If, you, if, you, if you've got a question that you can't answer there, feel free to drop us a line either in the comments here on YouTube or you can send an email to info at ropedye.com. You can also reach out through Instagram, through Twitter. Uh, our handle on Instagram is at Rope Dye. On Twitter, it's also at Rope Dye. Obviously, the website's www.ropedye.com. Um, stay in touch. Like, I'm really enjoying this community that we're building up here. I know I've been out of it a little while, but I mean, like, look, the wrist is still itchy, but it's pretty much back to normal. Um, and guys, yeah, okay. I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next vlog.